This is your RFB 18, RFB 24 quick start guide. Thanks for being here. Your RFB 18 will come in this box with some accessories. If you have an RFB 24, it will come in a hard case and include the same accessories. For this application, just simply pull the bottom tab of the box, lift up, and there's your beautifully crafted RFB 308 bullpup. By the way, RFB stands for Ridiculously Fabulous Bullpup. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice is your RFB, your sling, over here is your sling hardware and your magazine. We'll go through all of these accessories here in just a minute, but first I want to point out the most important part of your package, and that is your manual. If you have further questions about it, you can always contact us at our website or through our phone number, and we'll go ahead and take care of you. Also not shown here is a lifetime warranty on all parts and labor. For more information, visit caltechweapons.com. Okay, let's do a quick rundown of the RFB's features. So judging by this quarter, you can see how short the overall length of the RFB is. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten name brand ketchup packages, and then this one off brand. Eleven toothpicks. A P50, a PMR30, a PF9, and one shotgun dummy round shell, which gives you the exact length 27.5 inches and has an 18 and a half inch barrel. Something important to note right away is your serial number. It's located right here on the right side of your grip. Keep a copy of it in your safe for your records. Here is your ambidextrous bolt stop and bolt release. You have your ambi mag catch and mag release and your two rear assembly pins. Back to the stock, you'll notice it's a fixed stock with a Picatinny section on the bottom and a sling loop cut out for sling attachment. Just above the grip and trigger is your ambi safety and also is your middle assembly pin. On top here, we have the Picatinny rail system for mounting optics and accessories. On the other side here, this is your charging handle. It can easily and quickly be moved to the other side of the gun and we'll show you that here a little later. Just in front of your top Picatinny rail is your gas regulator and below the regulator is a set of threads here. That is for an accessory that we sell on our website. Lastly, the business end. This has the standard 5 8 24 thread pitch for mounting a compensator, brake, adapter, or suppressor wherever it's legal. In this segment, we're gonna talk about your gas system on the RFB and how to adjust it. If you're like me and you like to run a suppressor on just about everything, you're gonna to wanna to get a suppressor piston specifically for your RFB off of our website. Again, that's caltechweapons.com and we sell suppressor pistons there. So make sure you replace that before you try to adjust your gas if you're gonna be running a suppressor. Now to adjust your gas system, either way, whether you're running a suppressor or not, um, you want to pick a particular ammo that you like for practice and then obviously if you're going to be hunting you're going to want a particular ammo for that and if you're using this firearm for personal defense or property defense then you're going to want some defensive ammo so make sure that your gas setting equals that of the ammo that you're using um, because different there's different pressures and different brands of ammo and even different uh, loads of the same brand so that's why we've made the rfb with an adjustable gas system it's great for suppression it's also great to tailoring your ammo to exactly where you need it. So in order to adjust the gas, what I always do, I take it to the range, I go ahead and close the gas off all the way. So what I'll do is you, you can use a cartridge tip, a bullet tip, or you can, again, I always have my, my handy dandy uh, Keltec screwdriver here, and there's a detent in here, so you're gonna hear and feel some clicks. So I'll close it down all the way, which is gonna be clockwise, and what I'll do is I'll open it up to about, let's say, with the particular ammo that I'm running now, I'll open it up to about 12 clicks. And what that does is this cap, it vents off the gas that's created once you fire around. Uh, and it blows back the piston, piston blows back the carrier, and that's how the gun cycles. So if you wanna get nice, reliable, smooth shooting cycling out of your RFB, you just set the gas for that particular ammo that you have. So again, I open mine up to 12. I'll put a single round in the magazine, I'll fire. If the bolt locks to the rear, that means I can open this gas vent to, to release more pressure. So I'll open it up two more clicks, uh, which puts me at 14 clicks open. I'll fire again. If the bolt does not lock back to the rear, then I'll close it down one or two just to ensure that there's reliable cycling with the RFB. Now, if the bolt doesn't lock back to the rear on 12, I'll go ahead and close it a couple of times and then fire again to make sure that I get to that point where the gun is naturally gonna lock the bolt to the rear on an empty magazine. And that's how you know that you've got your gas setting properly. 
in place. So that's it on the gas stating, guys. Again, if you're going to suppress it, make sure you get that suppressor piston off of our website and make sure you get your gas setting properly tuned for the ammo that you're using. If you do that, you're going to have a great time with your RFB. Let's field strip the RFB. Pretty basic. Uh, first things first, safety. Always put some safety glasses on. Um, you're going to be dealing a little bit with some spring tension as usual when you're breaking down a firearm. So get those safety glasses on. And next thing is make sure there's no ammunition in your workspace. In fact, keep your ammunition in a completely separate uh, room. Um, here in our studio, we've got no live ammo. We've got a chamber flag in the gun, the one that came with it. We'll talk about that here in a second. So first thing you want to do, get that chamber flag out. So what I do is I just put the muzzle down, push up on the bolt stop here, and go ahead and pull the charging handle back. That will lock your bolt in place and you can pull your chamber flag out. Now these chamber flags, we have them on our website as well. They're specifically made for uh, Kel-Tec bullpup firearms. These also work in the RDB. All right, so for you lefties, the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to move the charging handle from the left side of the gun, the way it ships, over to the right side to accommodate you. So you'll just wanna push out this captive assembly pin. It doesn't come all the way out, so just get it started and then you can go ahead and pull it through the rest of the way on the other side. And then you will drop the handguard down grab the charging handle and pop it out. Very, very simple. The long side is what goes through the carrier, so flip the gun over this way. Remember, don't put it in an upside down. I've done it before where I had the short side going towards the barrel. You, you want this short side on top of the carrier. Put the long side through, go ahead and press it in, close the grip, and then push your assembly pin back through. And now it's set up for you lefties. All right, so now that we have all of that out of the way, we'll go ahead and field strip your RFB. Like I mentioned before, you've got four assembly pins. There's two in the front and two in the back. I'm using my trusty kel screwdriver here just to pop the pins. So one, two, three, and four. And then just pull the pins out to where they stop. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and pop the grip off. There's the trigger mechanism, safety mechanism, uh, your hammer assembly, all that good stuff in there. And uh, at this point, I should probably let you guys know that this is how you change the charging handle back over to the other side. If you're right-handed, <laughs> I would put it back in there, but for now, we're just gonna leave it out so that we can slide the rear cover off. And then we can pull the bolt carrier out. And to get the bolt out of the carrier, you simply just push this pin here. That's also a captive pin, which would be the cam pin, by the way. And then that will pop your bolt out of the carrier. To take the firing pin out of the bolt, you simply just put some pressure on the, firing, the back of the firing pin itself. Take the, your screwdriver, pop it through. Remember, this is under spring tension, so if you try to do it with your thumb and you push that out, it might slip and go flying across the room, and then you'll be calling us for a new firing pin. So make sure you keep that captive held down by your bench. That opens up the bolt and firing pin channel so that you can get all of that debris cleaned out in there, should there be any. You can clean all your springs, you got your carrier there, and uh, this here is your receiver and barrel assembly. And that there, guys, is the full field strip of your RFB. Okay, so here at Keltec, we highly recommend Lucas Oil Extreme Duty Contact Cleaner and their Extreme Duty CLP. The contact cleaner is going to go ahead and get rid of all that carbon and particulates inside the carrier, inside your barrel, inside your bolt assembly, and even your grip assembly. And it is safe for Cerakote if you happen to have a tan one like this or an OD green or some other color. So just make sure you get some of this contact cleaner. And then once you've got everything cleaned off, go ahead and hit everything with a light coat of this CLP to keep your RFB running smoothly. All right, so let's reassemble this puzzle piece. Very simple, guys. You just want to start off with your bolt assembly. Now, this is the top of your bolt here. And if you'll notice on the firing pin, there's this little notch. You want that notch to be facing up because your firing pin slides through the top of that notch to, to keep it captive inside the bolt. So first thing you want to do is put the firing pin spring in. Make sure that notch is facing up towards the top of the bolt. And what I like to do is just simply put the firing pin down on my bench and compress the spring and just slide that pin through there so it holds the firing pin captive. Very, very simple. 
Now, next thing you want to do, make sure that the extractors are up. So that would be the down position. This is the up position for the extractors. And then you can just lay that in your bolt carrier, like so. And slide the cam pin through. That cam pin is captive, so you don't have to worry about losing that. Kind of a nice feature. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and grab your receiver and barrel assembly. And again, with those extractors facing up, you'll want to slide the carrier over the frame rails. Now you have to have those extractors in the up position because if you try to slide it on when they're down, it's going to bump into the receiver and you're not going to be able to get your carrier all the way forward. Next thing you want to do is take the piston and go ahead and slide it in. There's a flat side on this piston. You want the flat side to go up against the uh, ejection chute. And you just got to kind of wiggle this around a little bit to find that sweet spot. So that is how you slide your piston in there. And then last, go ahead and slide your charging handle in. I put it back on the left side of the gun because I'm right-handed. <laughs> go ahead and slide the rear cover over. There's a little bit of a trick to this. So you're going to want to compress those recoil springs a little bit. And the reason for that is you want to try to line up your receiver holes with the holes in the top cover. Otherwise, your pins are not going to go through very easily. And then the next thing you want to do is just set the hammer in first. And the grip should just kind of squeeze into place. And again, apply a little bit of pressure to line up those holes and your pins should drop right into place. And on the front of the handguard here, you kind of want to just align it by pulling the handguard kind of up and down and wiggling it slightly. And that's it. You just want to do a function check. And that is the reassembly of your RFB. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. That concludes your quick start guide for the RFB series of bullpups. If you have any further questions, please visit our website, keltechweapons.com, and also visit us on YouTube at Keltech Weapons.